as we humans have great biological similarities, we vary with each other a lot in other aspects of life. And fortunately, we can measure some of those aspects in numbers. For example, weight, height, age, running speed, marks we got, time spent on a task, traveling time, etc. Now if we have a set of numbers, we can measure how far a number from that set is spread out from the average value of the set of numbers. This concept is known as variance. Let's learn more about variance and standard deviation of continuous distribution in this session. You might have already learnt about the variance and standard deviation of an ungrouped data set. The variance of an ungrouped data set x1, x2, x3 up to xn is the mean of the squares of deviations from the mean and is denoted by the square of the Greek lowercase letter sigma as sigma square. That is, variance sigma square is equal to sigma i varies from 1 to n, xi minus x bar the whole square divided by n. The positive square root of variance can be taken as an even more approximate measure of dispersion and is called the standard deviation. It is denoted by the Greek letter sigma. Now what if the data set is a discrete frequency distribution with observations x1, x2, x3 up to xn with the respective frequencies f1, f2, f3 up to fn. In that case, the square of deviation of each value from the mean is multiplied by the corresponding frequency. Now the sum of these products is divided by the sum of the frequencies to obtain the variance. That is, the variance is calculated as 1 by capital N times the sum of fi times xi minus x bar the whole square where i varies from 1 to n and capital N is the sum of the frequencies. Now the standard deviation is calculated as the positive square root of 1 by capital N times the sum of fi times xi minus x bar the whole square where i varies from 1 to n and capital N is the sum of the frequencies. For a continuous grouped frequency distribution, the formula and the process remain the same by representing the data as a discrete frequency distribution using the midpoints of each class. However, make sure that the grouped frequency distribution is converted to a continuous one in case it is not. Though the very definition of the variance and standard deviation talks about the deviations from the mean of the data, the part xi minus x bar the whole square looks a bit complicated in the formula. Let us try expanding it using the formula a minus b the whole square. Distributing sigma fi, we have 1 upon capital N, sigma fi xi square plus sigma fi x bar squared minus sigma fi 2 xi x bar. Let us take the x bars out of the summation. We can rewrite sigma fi as capital N and sigma fi xi as capital N X bar so we get 1 upon capital N times Sigma Fi Xi square minus capital N times X bar square can we further simplify this let us distribute the 1 upon capital N within the brackets Then we have 1 upon capital N times fi xi square minus x bar square. This x bar can be further written as sigma fi xi by capital N as per the definition of mean. 
Taking 1 upon capital N square out, we have the formula for variance equal to 1 by capital N square times capital N sigma fi xi square minus sigma fi xi the whole square. Now the standard deviation can be calculated as the positive square root of this expression. That is 1 by capital N times square root of capital N sigma fi xi square minus sigma fi xi the whole square. Let us try to understand this better using an example. Let us consider a continuous frequency distribution with class intervals 5 to 15, 15 to 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45, 45 to 55 and 55 to 65 that have frequencies 3, 4, 5, 4, 6 and 3 respectively. The class marks of the given continuous classes are 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and 60. Let's find the products of the observations with the corresponding frequencies. For this data, the sum of the frequencies is 25. And the sum of the products of the observations with the corresponding frequencies is 900. So the mean of the data is 900 divided by 25 that will be equal to 36. Now the deviations of each observation can be calculated by subtracting 36 from the observation. Let's find the square of the deviations. The sum of these products is 6200. The variance can be calculated by dividing this sum by the sum of the frequencies that is 25. Thus, the variance is 6200 divided by 25 that is 248. Now the standard deviation is the positive square root of the variance that is the square root of 248 approximately 15.75. Let us try to do the calculations using the alternative formulae we learnt. Start with the class intervals, class marks and their respective frequencies. First find the products of the class marks and the corresponding frequencies. Using the alternative formula we need only one more column to the table that is of fi xi square. The entries of this column can be calculated by multiplying the square of the class marks and the corresponding frequencies. The sum of the fi's is 25, fi xi's is 900 and fi xi square is 38,600. Let's apply the formula for variance and do the substitutions. We get the variance as 248. So the standard deviation is equal to the positive square root of 248 equal to 15.75. Here you can see that though the calculations involved are lesser, the numbers tend to be huge as we deal with the squares of the class marks multiplied by their frequencies. So this method is suitable for class marks that are smaller in values. Let's summarize what we've learned in this video. Variance is the mean of the square of the difference between each observation and the mean in a data set. It is represented by the square of Greek letter sigma as sigma squared. The positive square root of variance is called the standard deviation. It is represented by the Greek letter sigma. 
we also learn the formulae and their application for variance and standard deviation for discrete frequency distribution. For a continuous grouped frequency distribution, the formula and the process remain the same by representing the data as a discrete frequency distribution using the midpoints of each class. We also learned alternative formulae for finding the variance and standard deviation by rewriting the original ones. The most common application of variance is in polls. For opinion polls, the data gathering agencies cannot collect the data from the entire population. They set criteria for sampling the population based on ethnicity, income, regions, education and religion. With these samples, the data can vary from the mean by a large extent. And then variance is used to find the variation of the data from the mean. We'll learn more about statistics in the upcoming sessions. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.